Okay. I know that y'all had a good time last week because Benny is awesome at this. Yep. Yeah, Benny's real good at this. So Benny, and, and I've had, I heard he preached on forgiveness. <laughs> you can't find that Working on it. Yeah. I will tell you, that was an awesome sermon Sunday. That was an awesome sermon. Praise the Lord, sister. Yeah, he, he told us that you were in um, Puerto, Rico. Por, Puerto Rico and he said to, to pray for you. I said, well, if he's down there in Puerto Rico, he needs to pray. <laughs> <laughs> the very first morning, there's a guy standing at bed and breakfast. We don't know who this guy is. He just says he works for the U.S. Customs Department. Hmm. And, and we're talking with him. At first, I had to make sure I didn't have anything on me. <laughs> and we were talking about going to. We didn't. We didn't bring a car. We didn't rent a car because we don't read Spanish signs. And so uh, we were just going to get Uber to take us. And this guy said, uh, he said "Look, I'm from that area. Y'all go with me. I'll take you. I'll take you on a sightseeing tour." And we finally we'll come back that he didn't just work. We were eating dinner with him, lunch with him, and he found out. That he didn't just work for the U.S. Customs Department. He was in the uh, intelligence, and, it, and on the back, and on the back of his car, he had a symbol. And we looked at that, that symbol, and it was tactical weapons. <laughs> so I, I said, "Little, we had dinner with a hitman, <laughs> a government hitman." I'm just glad he didn't hit us. Amen. But the Lord just every day, the Lord puts somebody in our path to. Uh, matter of fact, we're riding down the road. And the guy goes, he stops. And it's like being in Italy, the way the roads are, they're real close. And they're, they're, and that's what one of the guys from Italy said, it's just like Italy in that area. Uh, but, we, but we go, and the man stops, and he backs into a street. And he goes down the street, and he knows exactly where to park. There's only one parking space. Mm. Hundreds of cars. He knows exactly where to stop, back up, and pull in. And while we're sitting there, he says, y'all need to move. I, we said, why? He said, we may need to, we're taking pictures and we need to leave. I said, why? I said, because I parked in a government a government parking and I'm not driving a government car. They're going to take my car. How do you know it was a government parking? How do you, I mean, it's like he's driving down the road and stops and pulls way on back, way on back, and pulls back in this way and pulls it and backs on in. I mean, he's like James Bond. Was he kidding? No. He wasn't kidding? He was not kidding. Yeah, so... Uh, uh, but he was pretty cool though. He said, "If you ever come back, I have a, my house. I have a down apartment down below. If you ever come back, let me know. Call me ahead of time. I'll come pick you up, and you can stay for free at my apartment." Cool. My gracious. That's awesome. Yes, he must have checked us out. <laughs> 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 he, he did a little. He didn't do because I checked it out of time. He didn't find all the things well, out well, of my past. I, I told him. I said. I told Linda. I said, Linda. I said, I said, we're going to be going, we're going to be on the way home, and the plane's going to divert, and they're going to come pull lights on us, and we need you to be special forces for. We're going to use use the infiltrate. Uh, but it was fun. But one thing about it, I've never seen food like that, but I've never had food taste like that. It was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. Yeah, that's great. It was awesome going in. I just put it that way. Uh, <laughs> Y'all can read the rest of that story. <laughs> <laughs> the intake was great. The output was not so hot. I'm telling you. Typical. Yeah. Okay. Let's get. No, we're talking about the burst. We're talking about the food. We're talking about the burst. <laughs> Have you ever seen anybody make ice cream in front of you in seconds? Thank you. They had a, We've stopped at place that said ice cream rolls. We go in there, and and Linda wanted the cheesecake, and I wanted just a chocolate chip cookie, and I and I give them the money, and I walk away, and I hear this. And look, he had two paint scrapers, and he was doing this to them, to the stuff out of like cookie dough. And then he takes it and he stretches it out. And after he stretches it out, he hits a button, and it freezes it. And then he, he takes his his paint scraper and scrapes up in its circles. He made the ice cream, and then took Lynn took a real piece of cheesecake and stuck in it, and did all that, and made a I mean made ice cream right in front of us. It was and it was absolutely dynamic. But the coffee there, that Puerto Rican coffee, I'm telling you. You couldn't once you put the lid on, you couldn't get the lid off, so the coffee was all gone because it was it was holding it. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. This is the last part. Next week we're gonna be talking about how to know what God wants you to do in your life. But 
this is this is uh, the final part of adversity, and and we all know that God has a very strong part to play in all of our adversity. If we think about that, think about that God has a strong part to play in all of our adversity, and that He orchestrates some of our adversity. Number one, He orchestrates it, and or uh, if He doesn't orchestrate it, He will allow it. And even if He allows it, no matter if He orchestrated Himself, He instigated. It, or the Satan instigated it, God always orchestrates it. So, so no matter what, it's kind of like uh, uh, you may see people and you think, man, they really got in some bad trouble, but you think if, if they hadn't have had this stuff happen to them ahead of time, they would have gotten worse trouble. But because God was orchestrating it, he prepared a way for them. All right, so how did Jesus, how is he our prime example to handle it? Verse, let's pray. Father, I love you, Lord. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace, your mercy. I thank you, God, for all you do for us, Lord. I thank you for the little surprises in our life, Lord, that bring joy. And some surprises maybe not bring joy, but it brings growth. I thank you for all of it. You're an awesome God. You're a powerful God. And there's nothing beyond you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said? Amen. 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 Just to quickly go over, <clears throat> just quickly to hit the first two points. How do you handle adversity in your life in a way that pleases God? Because there's all kinds of ways to handle adversity. But... The question is, is the way I'm handling it pleasing to God? There's the difference. Am I just handling adversity? Am I just getting through it? Or am I pleasing God? Also, am I getting, it's kind of like uh, uh, going to college again. I, I, I want to make sure that I get, I squeeze every little bit out of it because at 58 and going back, I've got nine more classes. I'm in my ninth class. i got eight more after this. Uh, uh, I just want to squeeze every little bit out of it because uh, I want to take advantage of everything. A lot of it, when I was younger, I didn't care. When the first time I went to college, just get me through. I just want to get through it. And now, now I understand. And now I'm, I'm kind of I'm, I'm eating all the I'm eating the gristle off the bone now. You go. But back then, I was leaving bone, leaving leaving meat on the bone and just throwing it. Okay. <laughs> so there's a difference. So again, in your adversity, are you learning from it, and are you growing from it? Because if you're learning from it and growing from it. Is cool. If you're not, then you're going to keep on doing it over and over and over again until you finally get it right. So let's look at how Jesus handled it and imitate him, and we're going to succeed. So first, he knew his purpose. And because he knew his purpose, it gave him focus. He said, uh, uh, and remember now, Satan's desire, he, he come to please God, and he come to, to set us free and to show us how to live. So that gave him focus. Satan's desire is to break our focus. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. He wants us looking in the wrong direction, <coughs> looking, you know, if he can get us looking at people instead of and thinking they're our enemy versus looking <coughs> at Satan and Satan's our enemy. You know, uh, when I went to Puerto Rico, I was kind of helpless because I, only, I mean, my whole vocabulary of Spanish consists of, I can get, I can get all my words on, one, on two hands. And this is if I repeat some of the words twice. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, uh, the Lord taught me a lesson uh, on, I think it was Thursday. Then and I walked. We had to walk to get to this restaurant. It was a Spanish restaurant, and we'd gone there with the with that with that U.S. Customs hitman, and he ordered for us. But <laughs> I was calling him hitman. But but we now we're here by ourselves, and there's like a hundred people in there, and ninety percent of them spoke Spanish. I walk in, and Linda was really tired because she had walked that long ways to get a block, over a block to get there, and she was really out to give out. So I said, you sit down. I'll take care of this. So I went over to the counter, but the counter was different than where the hitman was. The hitman was over here. This is the counter over here where you order stuff. So I'm still confused. Stuff's written in Spanish. I'm trying to figure out what's going on, and, and, and there's people in front of me, and I'm hearing them. And to me, speaking Spanish is like this. <laughs> they was like a scattergun. <laughs> and when I got off the plane, the lady came to pick us up. She listened to Linda and said, oh, you have such a beautiful accent. <laughs> Talking to Linda. And I said, well, I'm here too. And she said, and I don't know where you come from. <laughs> I said, she's from Virginia. I'm from Possum Tribe. You should know me better. <laughs> uh, so, so, uh, so I'm sitting in there and so here's what I did. I said, Linda, what do you want? She said, I want one of those sandwiches. A ham and cheese sandwich looks good. I mean, a turkey and cheese looks good. So I walk around the table stuff, find a guy eating a sandwich. And I said, God, please let him speak English. And so I walked up to him and he said, he said, 
can I help you? And I said, yes, praise God. <laughs> I said, what are you eating? He said, I'm eating a sandwich. Like, are you a Gordon who interested in a sandwich? <laughs> and I said, no, no, what kind are you eating? He said, I'm eating Spanish. I'm eating uh, uh, turkey and cheese. Said, That's exactly what my wife wants. I said, how do I order it? So he says, first he says, hold on. So he calls the waiter over. And he starts, blah, 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 to the waiter. And the waiter goes, Brr! So he can't talk English or speak English. So he says, just go over there and tell them, because I believe that man can speak English behind the counter. And sure enough, he spoke, he's bilingual when he wrote it down. He said, make sure you get the bag of that bread, though. So I go order it. They've got all the meat out on the counter, great little big hunks of meat, freshly cooked, hot, still steaming. They cut a big hunk out of it, carry it to the machine, and they, and they slice it. I mean, it was like, Linda said it tastes like Thanksgiving turkey. It was so good. It was the best mm. turkey sandwich I could ever have. But I weren't too impressed with the guys still eating. They were eating back there. Mm. They were drinking. They were having a good old time. And I'm thinking, the, e, the, e, the, uh, the EPA and the... And the, FD, and, the, and the Federal Department of uh, Agriculture, FDA, and, and uh, OSHA would have all had a fit if they'd have come in mm -hmm. to see these guys. But the food was awesome. But I sat down and said, you look disgusted. I said, no, I'm bewildered. And she said, why? Well, I said, because I just spent the last 30 minutes not being able to communicate with all these people. Think about it. Been there, done that. Yeah. In Germany. Yeah. And so I'm sitting there. Yeah. You know, and and so so it gave me a, it gave me a whole different it gave me a whole different view of everything. You know, what I'm saying I'm, I'm gonna start getting better on my Spanish than I was before. I'm, I kind of kicked it around before, but those guys at prison when I'm trying to talk to them, and 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 all the guys at prison, I just go, I say, do you want to pray? And they go, mm -hmm. and I do that, and they go, and I go, and go <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, now I'm gonna. And Linda gives me these cards on the front Spanish, on the back English, and I say, "Would you like to speak to a Spanish a Spanish counselor?" Yes. Would you like to have a Bible? Yes. Do you want to be saved? Yes. Do you want to receive Jesus Christ? Yes. And so I take the cards. I've led several guys to Christ with those cards that they give me. But now my whole thing is, I'm gonna go beyond the cards and learn it myself. So next time, if I'm in a place like that, I'm not gonna be stuck not being able to talk. That, that was. And as much as I like to talk and couldn't talk. That had to kill him. Yeah. That had yeah. to kill him. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sounds like we come close to having a funeral. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just, okay. So the saints desire is to break our focus. Our purpose is not to fail. Listen to this. Listen carefully. Our purpose in life is not to fail, but to bring life. We're to dispel the darkness. You say, well, I don't have much light. Let me tell you something. In complete darkness, the smallest of lights bring light. In complete darkness. That's true. This, this world's in complete darkness. So, you just, no, if, even if all you got is a little bitty light, you got plenty. All right? The thief coming home is still, not, comes here to steal and kill and destroy, but I've come that they may have real life and eternal life, mm -hmm. more and better than they ever dreamed of. John 10.10. 10. Number two, he knew his path. He knew his path was going to be bathed in trouble. Okay? How many here realize that our path is going to be bathed in trouble? The Bible says, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Bible says, many, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions. And the word afflictions means trouble, pressure, misunderstanding, sickness, all of these things together. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Doesn't mean he takes them away, but he can deliver you either out of it or through it. Okay? So, so here we go. So he knew his path. It gave him assurance in adversity, the trouble, crisis, danger. And, and again, uh, Satan wants us to forget our real enemy. I, no, I do not. I do not. I don't feel like it anyway. I don't feel that way. But we all got to realize this. I don't have an enemy in this room. I don't feel that way anyway. Amen. But, I, but I need you to know that. Because my enemy is outside on the steps, Devil. poking his lips out. <laughs> okay, and that's Satan. Mm -hmm. Okay, and when you understand that, it takes it takes the pressure off trying to be able to relate to one another. I can relate to you because now I don't have to be mad at you. I don't have to hold things over you because I realize you're not my enemy. Satan is. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like what well, what if Eddie walked up? Well, how would it look if Eddie walked over here in front of y'all and y'all saw him? He walks over here with a hammer oh. <laughs> and looks at me and grins and just slaps me with that hammer on my hand. Oh. 
and then walks away and sits back down. And so I get up and I go over there and I hit Benny. <laughs> I said, that hurt. Look, 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 look. That hurt Benny and I hit Benny. Would that make sense? No. No, I need to go after Eddie. Who, who, does, who, does, who does Benny go after? <laughs> The point I'm trying to make is, is when, when things happen in our life, we go after the wrong people. True. You know, and if and even that person may be the one, that's not the one I'm fighting. I'm not fighting flesh and blood. I am not fighting flesh and blood. All right. Now, here we go. That's the, here we go. This is this week's, and then we'll be through with this. Now, I didn't know his purpose, and that was to bring salvation to man. He knew his path. It was going to be a lime of pain. It was not going to be easy. And we all need to know that. Our purpose is to shine light in darkness. That is our purpose. And even if you mess up, it's not a failure if you learn from it. He knew his path. It was going to pay with, with trouble, adversity. Our path is not going to be easy. If anybody tries to tell you that you're going to have an easy life as a Christian, you need to go find somebody and 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 uh, or find that person that tells you that and say, dude, I don't know who we're, I don't know what rock you're living under, but but I, we we're fighting a real enemy. He fights you every stick and step of the way, trying to break your focus, and so he's trying to get you to forget who your real enemy is. So uh, now he knew his source of power, and because he knew his source of power, uh, that just was amazing. Because because see, Jesus, here's what you got to understand. And I've heard it say so many different ways over the years, but this is the way the Bible explains it. Jesus was 100%. Some people say he was 50% God, 50% man. That is not true. He was 100% God. If he was not 100% God, he would not have had the price to pay for our redemption. But he was 100% man also. Because if he weren't 100% man, he cannot say, I know how it feels to go through what y'all go through. He's 100% man, 100% God. That's the mystery of the deity, the mystery of the Godhead, the mystery of the incarnation. So Jesus on earth limited his own self. If you look in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it talks about laying aside. He limited his own self. So because he limited his own self... Much, uh, much of the stuff he was doing, although he was he, he had it with, without any restrictions, <coughs> still, he moved through the power of the Holy Spirit to show us that we could do that. Okay? We're not 100% God. We're just 100% man or woman. Okay? But we're serving 100% God. Okay? So, but he tried to show us, and not tried, he showed us that it could be done. So now, he gave us a great example, and that was... Uh, his source of power. Jesus told them it's necessary for them to pray consistently and never quit. Luke 18 and 1. And we talked about this the other day. And that was, he says, uh, that would never quit. Literally in the Greek means stopping, seeing the finish line, and stopping short of it. Have you ever thought, well, there may be some hope, but then you quit? You know what? Maybe there was some hope for this, but I, I'm quitting anyway. But you know what? Jesus said, you must always pray and never quit. And what he's saying is, don't get to the, don't get right there at the finish line. You see it. It's, it finishes in sight, but you quit. But you quit. Okay? So, we need to pray and wait for answers. <coughs> so, let me just tell you about this now. I, I, was, uh, I was reading this and I was thinking about it and I was praying about it. As I was praying about it, uh, this scripture came to mind hard. And so I was going to say, you know, see, the Spirit in our lives, there's three things the Spirit uses. You remember to write this down. It's on, your, it's on your outline. There's three things the Spirit uses in our lives that He hooks up to. And when He hooks up to and yokes up to it, something powerful happens. The Spirit uses prayer, persistence, and patience in our own lives. Prayer, persistence, persistence, and patience. Now, you want to see an example of prayer, persistence, and patience? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Paul has his thorn in the flesh. And the reason he got his thorn in the flesh is because of all these revelations that he's had from God. All these revelations. These revelations that he got from God, God said, I don't want you to get the big head. Some of y'all don't realize some of the stuff you're going through in here is just keep you from getting the big head. 
And for some of you, I'm in one if that worked. <laughs> I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll play it, I'll play it. Look, this will keep you from getting the big head. <laughs> well, actually, I was looking at Venus. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's why I well, maybe that was Dudley. He's hitting Dudley, too. Okay. No, no, no. I was just kidding with y'all. Look, but, but God wanted to keep him down to earth. He wanted to keep him anchored. And because he wanted to keep him anchored... And because he wanted to keep him down to earth, and because he wanted, he needed to keep him in a position, a, a pliable position to be used by God. And so, in order to be, in order to be in a pliable position to be used by God, God orchestrated pain. Wow. Oh, can he take it back? Yes. <laughs> That's a good question. But, yeah. You should listen. She got a thing wrapped around her. I think she's looking like Clint Eastwood about everything that thing around him. If you ain't got a, you ain't got a door from a stove on you up here. Okay. okay. All right. So here we go. Even though I received such wonderful revelations from God, so to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and to keep me from becoming proud. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time He said, "My grace is all you need." My power works best in weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults and hardships and persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. That's the message. I want to read the Amplified version of this. This is so awesome. And that was 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 12 and 7. Because of the surpassing greatness and extraordinary nature of the revelations which I received from God, for this reason, to keep me from thinking of myself as important, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan, to torment and to harass me. Let me just stop for a second and talk about this, this torment me. Uh, again, this thorn in the flesh, that word thorn, uh, in Vietnam... The Greeks were the one. That, the Greeks and the Romans did this, but it's also in Vietnam. What were they called? The bungee sticks. Yeah. Uh, where they dug a hole, and the, and the Greeks and the Romans perfected this anyway. They dig a hole, and they would put razor sharp poles in the hole, mm. and below the ground, mm. and they would dip it in poison. Mm. And so when the soldiers would trip and fall in this hole, they would impale themselves with these with these thorns. And the poison would cause them to to either die a gr grisly death, or to die a slow, painful death, and or die an immediate death. But they would they would they would uh, have these bungee sticks w w w when they fell in. They would hit them, and they did the same thing in Vietnam. And also they had booby traps in Vietnam with these bungee sticks, and it would come and sweep across, and it would catch you, and it would just impale you, and 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 it was just terrible. That's the thing that Paul was talking about. The same thing. Paul said Satan, Satan's trap. I mean, it's poison. It's there. It's hidden. And it's poison. And when I step in it, it hurts. But, but God said, I allowed this because you needed it, Paul, to keep you balanced. To keep you down to earth. To keep you to where I can use you. Because I've noticed a lot over the years that there's been a lot of, a lot of Christians fall because they get to a point where they think they're not going to fall anymore. You get to the point where they think, hey, I got this now. And they start going to autopilot. And when they go into autopilot, they find, find they get in a lot of trouble. So, <laughs> the messenger of Satan to torment and harass me, to keep me from exalting myself. Concerning this, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My loving kindness and my mercy are more than enough, always available, regardless of the situation. For my power is being perfected. Hear that? My power is being perfected. And it's completed and shows itself most effectively in your weakness. God's power is perfected in our weakness. Wow. He must, be very, he must have perfected a lot of power in me. <laughs> okay. Our, his power is perfected in our weakness. Therefore, I will all the more gladly boast in my weaknesses so that the, Lord, the power of Christ may completely enfold me and may dwell in, in me. So, that I, I, so I am well pleased with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak in my human strength, then I am strong, truly able, truly powerful, truly drawing from God's strength. So that's some powerful, powerful stuff. So remember, 
And, and here it is in this scripture right here. Watch. Remember I said prayer, persistence, and patience. Watch this. Prayer. <clears throat> when he had this thing, he said, I prayed, I prayed to God. That's prayer. He said, I prayed three times. That's persistence. He said, but I found out that it wasn't what I was thinking, so I'm not going to give up just because it's not the answer I was looking for. Uh-oh. All right, we can all go home now. I stepped on everybody's toes, including mine. Prayer. I prayed to God three times persistence, patience. Even though I didn't get the answer I was looking for, I'm not going to give up. Now, prayer is more than words. It's connecting with a higher power. It's conversing with deity. Wow. How many can call Trump today and get a, get a personal call through right now? Who wants to? Okay. How many can call North Korea or South Korea right now and call their people? Who wants to? <laughs> How many can call the Queen of England right now and get an audience? The British intelligence. Well, I mean us. Okay, the British intelligence can, of course. The, the point I'm trying to make is all the leaders in this world we can't get a hold of. But you know what? The greatest leader of all we can get to just like that. What prayer? Wow. What Amen. prayer? Amen. And he knows exactly what we need at when. And even if you don't know how to pray, he says he'll groan for you. Mm -hmm. That's, right. That's some powerful stuff. You know, and when we when we get weak, when we get slack, he'll do the exact thing that we need. Mm -hmm. to, to fix that. Mm -hmm. He knows how to do it. Every time. Every time. That's right. Just before you buy them out. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, that's right. Yeah, he'll do a real good fixing. That's right. So prayer is more than words. It's connected to a higher power. Persistence is stay in power. But it's this. It always talks about bearing up under the load. When you talk, when you see persistence in the Bible, uh, it talks about bearing up under the load. So, uh, persistence is stay in, stay in power to keep working, to do a good work without, this is persistence to do a good work without giving up whether God shows up or not hmm. think about that say it again please persistence is stay in power it's working or doing a good work without giving up whether God shows up or not he always shows up, right? Right, but you can't always see him. Sometimes, okay. sometimes he's, he's, he's always there, but sometimes he doesn't make his presence known. Right, yeah. Sometimes he's coming as well. Not now, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the time I told you about Dan Daniel had a bully in school? Daniel was like in the seventh grade, sixth grade. DC was in the ninth grade. And DC was a tower, he was a giant, and Daniel was little. And Daniel said, there's a guy picking on me every morning in the bathroom, Daddy. I don't know what to do. And I said, stand up to him, son. And he said, Daddy, I can't stand up. He was bigger than me. I said, just stand up to him. I'll tell you what, he's, he's actually scared of you. If you'll stand up to him, he'll leave you alone. He said, I'll try it tomorrow, Daddy, but I don't know. I said, you just go ahead and try it. Trust your Daddy. <laughs> so what happened? So, I, so I, I, I called D.C., over and I said, DC, I need you to do me a favor. He said, Well, I said, I need you to be in that bathroom tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Don't let Daniel know you're there. I said, But you just make sure that he don't get hurt. He said, I got this, Daddy. I said, No. <laughs> so when they come back home that day, Daniel came up and said, Daddy, I did what you said. I stood up to that bully and he looked at me and he got scared and he shook his head and he ran out. Daddy, I'm. You the man, Daddy. I'm the man. Yeah. And so I said, Well, you the only one. It said, Just me and him, Daddy. We stood eyeball to eyeball. And he, I said, Okay, cool. And Doc I said, DC, I thought you were going to be there. He said, I was, Dad. <laughs> I said, Where were you? Watch this. Daniel standing here, the bully standing there. DC was in the stall. Oh. DC stepped out of the stall. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel's talking to him. DC went to the bully and went. <laughs> and so when Daniel said that guy got scared and ran out, he weren't running from Daniel. <laughs> 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 uh, 
<laughs> okay, so now, so now, when you stand up to the devil, he's not running from you. He's running from your big brother behind you. That's right. <laughs> That's right. He got, mm -hmm. he got my back. God's got my back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <laughs> it's pretty cool. That was an awesome story. I said I'm going to use that sometime in a sermon. I'm telling you. <laughs> you have several times. Yeah, yes. several times. Yes. Many times. <laughs> Many times. I've got a lot of miles out of that one. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so... <laughs> and, and here, here, here uh, is God put an acrostic right in the Bible. Ask, ask, and keep on asking. Here's ask, A. Ask and keep on asking, and it'll be given to you. Seek, S, and keep on seeking, and you will find. I had a minister pull me to the side. I was a young Christian. He pulled me to the side, and I said, I'm having some problems with my faith, and blah, blah, blah. And he said, I'm going to tell you what. I said, why? He said, pray for it. Pray one time and leave it alone. If you got to pray for it more than once, you're showing a lack of faith. And so I said, okay. And I said, that didn't even sound right coming out of his mouth. And the devil didn't sound right going to my ears. And then I read this. And I said, he has no idea what he's talking about. Because God said, ask and keep on asking. And it'll be given to you. Don't stop. Seek and keep on seeking. And you will find. Knock, and, and it's in the Greek, it's the Greek's what's saying to keep on. Knock and keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. And each one actually is a different step of prayer. I've already gone for it, I've spoke to him, and I said, God, this is what I need. But now I'm not stopping with that. Now I'm, now I'm searching, now I'm seeking God. I'm really getting in there with him now. And then, and then, and then I'm going to knock. Okay, I'm going to make sure that he hears me. Amen? So, it'll be opened. When you see Luke 18, we're talking about it's necessary to pray consistently and never quit. Jesus told the story about the little old woman that went before the judge, and she said, I need you to avenge me of my enemies. He said, I ain't got time for you, old woman. And so she went back next day. I need you to avenge me. He said, I ain't got time for you, old woman. Leave me alone. I'm too important for you. She went back next day. I need you to avenge me. And he finally said, okay. He said, I'm not doing this because I like you. I'm not doing this because I'm good. I'm doing this because I'm tired of you. You're running me crazy. i got to get you to be quiet, woman. And so if an unjust judge can do that, what about our father? That's right. Wow. That's powerful. So he knew his source of power. And, and I read out just, just a, few, uh, a few examples of his prayers. Of course, Mark 135, very early in the morning while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, went out to a solitary place where he prayed. Matthew eleven twenty five. At that time, Jesus said, "I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have you have hidden these things from the wise and learned, and revealed to them little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure." He's talking to the Father. Matthew fourteen. After he dismissed him, he went up to a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. While his disciples were on the water fighting <clears throat> for their life, he's praying. You have to go home and read this in the Bible because he talks so fast. You don't oh, here you go. <laughs> I get it to you. There you go. You'll be able to read it. Yes, you can because it's printed. Oh man. I had to. That's printed. Give it to him. I can make more copies of it. Okay. That spells Matthew. Has he ever got give y'all something to read? Translate. Yeah. Hey. I used to have to For y'all's information, he writes <laughs> <laughs> That's Pentecostal right. <laughs> okay. Well, that explains it. <laughs> yeah. So, he knew a source of power. He also knew, he knew his push. Now, I put you that word push because uh, <clears throat> the Bible, when it talks about Jesus going into the wilderness after he was baptized, Mark said the Spirit drove him. The others say he was led. Mark says the Spirit drove him. It's powerful. So, so Jesus knew he was going for 40 days of testing. And he was driven there. It gave, see, see, his push, it gave him momentum and he constantly moved ahead. You never see where Jesus is moving backwards. He's always moving forward. And, and it says in Isaiah 50 and 7, For the Lord God will help me, therefore I will not be disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint. I know that I will not be ashamed. He knew that when he went to Jerusalem, he was going to die. He went anyway. He knew it was going to be bad. He went anyway. 
When he went to the garden, he knew his, he knew his guys were going to going to get scared and run like rabbits. He went anyway. My question is, to us, us, not just y'all, me too, if we knew how bad it was going to get, would we do it anyway? Probably. Probably. Not like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, he did the ultimate sacrifice. We think we sacrifice sometimes. Oh. I mean, we didn't get, we didn't, we don't go through anything like what he went. No, no. Well, that cross is pretty tight. Frankie, mm -hmm. you make a list of everybody you'd be willing to go through what Jesus went through. <laughs> and I promise you it's going to be a real short Very list. Short. <laughs> my name ain't going to be short. on it, but don't worry, you ain't on my list. <laughs> my name's not going to be on the list. <laughs> That's good. That's good, Benny. My name is not going to be on the top of that list either. <laughs> no, there's, gonna be, there's only a couple. I mean, there's, there's the senior. There's my kids and my wife. I think it's... Yeah, if I ain't married to you, born to you, you didn't make a list. That's right. And also, also, did you hear what was a Irma Bombic said that wisdom of life never lend your car to anything that you gave birth to. <laughs> That's true. Well, yeah. Back to our car. Yeah. Okay. So. No comment. <laughs> yeah, my boys, Bethany, my boys all wrecked everything I've had. They bought the, the wrecks I've had most of the time came from them. Uh, I got I got a chocolate lab. Somebody said the other day, I said, come here, I got a chocolate lab. And the lady said, that ain't chocolate, that's a black lab. I said, you ever heard of black or dark chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> <Good>. dark chocolate. <laughs> okay. You cannot get caught up in the trap of looking back. Or what ifs. The what ifs will kill you. How many ever caught up in the what ifs? No. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been caught up in them. What if? What if? What if? What if? You know. This word in the English language, if. It's the what? If is the biggest word in the yes. English language. Oh yeah. If bullfrogs had, <laughs> the bullfrogs had wings, they wouldn't bump their hind every time they hop. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> if bullfrogs had pockets, they'd carry water pistols, shoot crocodiles with, but they don't. Right. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the biggest word is smiles. What? Smiles, S-M-I-L-E-S. What was that? There's a mile between each S. Why you say that? It's Eddie. <laughs> you were correct with if, okay? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I've been taught that my whole life. And he said, he said, he said, you should have, could have, would have. He said, he said, the biggest word is smiles because there's a mile between each S. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I would never disagree with that either. <laughs> <laughs> so, sometimes it don't pay. <laughs> it's a bad habit. I remember watching a John Wayne movie, and and it was on. Oh, I don't know what it was on. It was on uh, on my uh, True Grit. And when and when they're at that they're at that house and they've gone up and they've thrown their they went and threw their coat up on the Glenn Campbell threw his coat up or up there and made the guys come out flushed them out but the other guys came up and and there was a big old fight firefight going on and uh, uh, the guy the guy went to save the save the hid guy and he got shot and the guy just jumped up on his horse and took off and and Matty Ross said. Uh, how do you like that? I said he, that man gave his life for him. He didn't even turn around, and even look back. And John Wayne said, "Actually, that would have been a good sermon." He said, "That's a it's a bad habit to look back." <laughs> Amen. So if I, if I look back, and it's a discipline. If I look backwards, it's always to see what kind of lesson I learned or should be learning. I don't look back to go shoulda, coulda, woulda. Because I find out later on, a lot of times that I'm glad it happened that way. When I first got saved, and and when the floor first called me to preach, I was working. I couldn't go to Bible college. I had to take eight eight years to get a four year degree, and drive an hour and a half one way most of the time, and it was terrible. And I said, some of my friends they got right out of high school, and they went right to Bible college, and they got their masters, and they got their doctorate, and they're you know they're, and I'm here sitting here struggling trying to get get my BS and. 
And I said, it just, it just doesn't seem right, God. You knew I was going to do it. Why didn't you let me do it? And then it hit me. My boss man, when I was quitting Procter & Gamble, the head man of the company sat down beside me. And he said, uh, I hear you leaving us, David. I said, yep, I am. He said, full-time minister. I said, yes, sir. And he said, I want to tell you something. That's so awesome. And I said, and I was glad to hear it because everybody was telling me how stupid I was to leave the company. They said, you can't leave this company. You can't leave. You can't leave. You can't leave. You can't leave. But he said, he said, uh, he was Presbyterian, and he said, my pastor was a chemical engineer. Wow. And he said, uh, the Lord called him to preach, so he went to seminary. And said, uh, he said, that guy, he said, I'd rather have him than a guy with seminary with no experience. He said, because, he said, this guy knows what it's like to work schedules. This guy knows what it's like to work projects. This guy knows what it's like to work on limited budgets. This guy knows all this stuff, not just what the church, how to do it in a church situation, but in a real life situation. He said, so his, his lifetime experience is invaluable to the ministry. And when he told me that, that, from that time on, I felt better about the whole thing. Because it made me think, you know, you're right. It does make a difference. You know. So, again, uh, don't look back and think, well, shoulda, coulda, woulda. You know, just do it. Do what you got to do. And sit back and think about it. If you got, if, if something, you know, I'm 58 years old going for, the, for this degree in counseling. 58. You know, and common sense says, why well, go at 58? But the stuff I'm learning is invaluable. It's awesome. And and so uh, uh, even if I even if the Lord were to come back before I finish the degree, it's already helped a lot of people that I wouldn't have had that in my head. I wouldn't have had that about available if it hadn't been for this. So, you know, again, we can shoulda, coulda, woulda, shoulda, coulda, woulda, shoulda, coulda, woulda. We're proud of you. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank I you. Thank you. Absolutely. What, Bethany? I, I, I said I can't clap right now, but I still love you. <laughs> 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 and I started to, and I figured out I can't do that either. <laughs> <laughs> the point I was trying to make is, is don't go back, shoulda, coulda, woulda, shoulda, coulda, woulda, shoulda, right, coulda, woulda. go forward. Because if I, I had a guy come to my house, one of my spiritual fathers came to my church in 90, 95. And said, you're getting ready to make a mistake. And I said, well, first off, what mistake are you talking about? And number two, how do you know this? And he said, he said, I've heard through the grapevine that you've got all the classes you can get right now through the Sachs accredited university. And you have to go to another university to go and pick up your core. He said, and I'm hearing that you're going to go to Christian stuff, Christian accredited, not Saxon Credit, which is the Southern Association of College and Schools, which is ECU, Duke State, and all those places. He said, I hear you're going to do that. And it says, one day you're going to need Saxon Credit. He said, don't do it. And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at you now. Yeah. And, and now I'm getting Saxon Credit. Believe it or not, uh, because of a certain situation that I was helping in, in the community, uh, the state called and wanted to know my credentials. Mm -hmm. Here. Mm -hmm. Blew me away. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I, I just blew me away because I said, That's, I've never heard of that before. But they did. And my, <clears throat> I told them I was in the middle. I had just started. I was getting ready to start Lee. And... Uh, and I had the other stuff. I was gearing to start laying. They said, good. That was it. Well, they liked the other stuff, but they said the leaves might give it the, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the, the sacks, sacks credit. So, again, it's never too late to do what's right. It's never too late. To, and I could look back and go, shoulda, coulda, woulda, shoulda, coulda, woulda. Man, if I listened to him in 95, I'd already had all this. No, I didn't. Better late than never. That's right. So, the shoulda, coulda, so the shoulda coulda, woulda. Don't go back, because you'll go crazy. Just do what you got to do. That's right. That's right. So, I, I, you know, but the cool thing is now Linda, Linda, they wanted to send Linda back to school at her work, and Lee offers what they need, what she needs, and so now when I sit on the couch at night and do my homework, she's sitting beside me doing hers from Lee. 
That's cool. <laughs> That's cool, and we're taking some of our classes are the same classes, so eventually we'll be able to take classes together. And I said, you, you're aware. She says, can you think we can take classes together and not be a competition? I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> that, would, that would keep you on the straight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here we go. Now, he knew his push. He had something going. It gave him momentum. Let me ask you a question. I want you to think about this thing now. I want you to think. Y'all close your eyes. I'm going to ask you some questions. And then we're going to close. I want you to leave you with this. I want you to think about it. This has been an awesome, awesome study. I want you to think about something. And next week we'll help answer number one if you don't already know it. Do you know your purpose? Your God-given purpose. I know my purpose is to be a dad. My purpose is to be a husband. My purpose is to be a pastor. Blah, blah, blah. But do I know... My God-given purpose assignment. That's number one. Number two, do you know your path? I can tell you right now, it's going to be, don't think because if you have adversity or trouble or crisis that it's not the right path, that's wrong. Your path will be full of trouble, crisis, and danger. Number three, do you know your source of power? Because I can tell you, if you give out right now, more than likely, if you give out spiritually right now, I know we can give out physically because you just naturally do that, but if you're giving out spiritually, there's a good chance that you've lost your connection to the proper power. And number three, do you know your push? Do you live in yesterday? Or do you live in the now with your eyes focused on tomorrow? You know why the rearview mirror is smaller than the windshield? It's because you're meant to look through the windshield when you're driving. The rearview mirror is just for backing up. But too many of us are driving, looking through the rearview mirror. That doesn't work. It's nothing but accidents. Do you know your purpose? Do you know your path? Do you know your source of power? Do you know your push? I just want you to think about that. Leave that in your mind when you're praying. And also remember from Sunday, make sure you praise too. You got to praise. You got to praise God for the answer. You got to praise Him because praise is the purest form of faith. Praise and thanksgiving. It's the purest thing. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, we love you. We praise your name. We thank you for all things. We know, God, you're alive and well on the throne. Father, we know, God, that you're working in our lives. We know, God, that, that we never have to walk alone, that you're with us every step of the way. I ask you right now, God, to touch, anoint, heal. Father, help us, Lord, to find our purpose. Help us, God, to realize our path is going to be full of adversity, trouble, crisis, and danger, but you're there. Help us, Lord, to keep a hold of our source of power, our connection with you. And, Lord, help us keep that push. Help us keep moving forward. Get momentum and move forward. Quit looking back. That's a bad habit. Like old John Wayne said, that's a bad habit. Also, John Wayne said, courage is being afraid and saddling up anyway. <coughs> Help us to saddle up and keep on going. In the name of Jesus, we love you. We praise your name. And the church says, Amen. Amen. Hold up.